Welcome back everyone, and I'd like to th personally thank you for taking part in my experiment, my survey. What survey you're, talk you're asking yourself? Well, I don't remember doing a survey. If you watched the last video, you took part in my survey. Let's talk about where we left off at the end of the video. The end of the last video, that is. We haven't started this video yet, have we? Or maybe we have. Maybe you've already left me. Bye-bye. No, no, don't leave. Please, come back. Okay, at the end of the last video, uh, we defined efficiency as the ratio of input energy to moved energy. And I gave an example of a TEC here, using my own TEC calculator, and you could say that's not very good factual, using your own written software to back up your own claims. But we'll cover that in a completely different video. Uh, no one trolled my previous video to saying that anything that I said in the previous video was incorrect. And that was the experiment to see if anyone would troll me or not. I was expecting trolls. I'm used to trolls, but no trolls. So actually, I guess thank you. So anyway, we had an output uh, power of roughly 80 watts and roughly a 9 watt input power. And that meant that the input power to ratio, or if you like efficiency based on this, was 881%. But we also made this statement here, which was due to the conservation of energy, O, or output can never be greater than the input, and so the efficiency can never be greater than 100% or 1. Now, I've just said this statement is true. However, we have 881% efficiency. Oh, it's free energy! Amazing TCs! Yes! We can add ourselves, we can get trillions of views if I just make a video saying free energy, look at my 150,000% TEC and you'll all watch it and try it and I will be a millionaire, yes! Oh, no, not really. This is the wrong kind of channel about than that. This channel is actually about the facts, the real stuff, not fantasy. Sorry. I, um... I added in this example here because I'm aware that I pretty much wrote the software based on equations and most people are not actually aware about TECs, which is why, of course, I'm making this video series. So here is my air conditioning unit, and this is what is currently cooling or warming me now, depending on what time of the year you're watching this. And if you're in the US, you're probably the opposite because I'm in the chilly south, southern hemisphere. But I digress. So... The input power for cooling anyway is 1,760 watts, and its cooling capacity is 7,100 watts. Well, that's the output cooling. So here we go. Here's a Panasonic real world. Everyone can go and buy one of these air conditioning units, and this is largely why we have air conditioning units, because of what we're talking about. And if we do the maths, that works out to be 403%. Now, at no point should we be comparing this to this, uh, but it is another example of it being well over 100%. But we're really left with this conundrum that if this is correct and this is correct, how can these numbers be correct? And this has been the big question. The meaning of TEC life. Well, it's the answer to that is this is true, and the statement we've made here is true. However, it's completely a load of rubbish. Now, one of these have to be wrong, otherwise, because they're effectively count contradicting each other. This one here is defining efficiency, and if we do the mathematical equation, it comes out to be over 100. This one says you can't have over 100, so which one's wrong? Anyone? Can I throw out some comments there? I really did think that I was going to get trolled in the last video, at which point I was going to release slash make this video, but no one did. And I assume that a lot of people did know, but just didn't comment. So the answer to that is... This conservation of energy is 100% true. This statement here is a steaming pile of complete rubbish. 
This is rubbish. Now, one of the reasons why I left the other video up and a big gap between this one is because I wanted to see if anyone would notice that this statement was a load of rubbish. And unfortunately, people did not. And that proves the point that people don't actually understand what they're talking about when they talk about efficiency because everyone assumed that that statement is correct and that is how people define efficiency on the internet now when it's in relation to TECs. Now that's not factual but that's the common understanding and belief of a TEC efficiency is this statement. Efficiency is defined as the ratio of input energy to moved energy. But this is not an efficiency statement. This is a co-op statement. This is a load of rubbish. Okay, let's break it down. So we have our TEC. We put in electricity here. Let's call this 100 watts. Uh, its job is to move energy through it. We then have a 1,000 watt heater, and it has its own power source, and then we're moving this through the TEC. Now, how this is illogical. So you've got 100 watts coming in here, we've got 1,000 watts coming in here, and we've decided to just take the 1,000 watts and divide it by the 100 watts equals efficiency. What? This is completely different to this. This is just craziness that efficiency is taking two completely separate electrical devices, slapping them together and going and doing some math and go, there you go, that's the efficiency. Really? I don't think so. Let's look at another example. So here is a, a, a RC car and it is pulling a um, trolley with a heater on it. Now that RC car is the TC in this, and this is the heat load. So we've defined the input power of this RC car pulling this heater as efficiency. So we've got a 100 watt RC car pulling a 200 watt heater and that somehow becomes efficiency? Uh, no. Shouldn't the efficiency be the efficiency of the motor turning the wheels, uh, which is going to be this way, to make the car go this way? The amount of power going in is 100 watts, and how much forward motion, say 50 watts, would be efficiency? And this heater has its own power source, Efficiency would be defined by how much heat is coming out of the heater relative to how much power is coming in. These are completely separate mathematical equations on efficiency. This car is pulling the heater, but that is not an efficiency statement. What happens, I don't know, what happens if you took the car away? So now I've got zero input and we've still got a thousand, a 2,000 watt load. And how do we do the maths on that? It's infinitely power powerful. Yes, we're back to free energy. Woohoo! We're just going to take a whole bunch of oil heaters. We're going to roll them down a hill. We're going to not worry about the fact there's gravity involved. And we have free energy. We are living the dream. No, no. This is... This is not what it is. Let's take a more extreme, ludicrous example than this, because that's a fairly good way of redrawing how a TC moves. A TC is about moving one heat source uh, to another location. How about a flatbed truck with two giraffes on it? Is that a good example? Why not? That will work in everyone's... Uh, theory of efficiency. So let's put 10 litres of petrol in there. I don't know. How do you draw? I don't want to draw. Uh, wait, sorry. Sorry for the pedantic people. 
it's not petrol, that'll be a diesel truck. We'll put 10 litres of diesel in there. And we are going to move two giraffes. One, two. So as efficiency, two giraffes divided, that's supposed to be a G, divided by the input diesel of 10 litres. So the efficiency of this truck is 0 0.2 giraffes per litre. Uh, let's do another experiment. Let's, I suggest this weekend, go down to your local truck uh, purchasing place. I don't know what that would be. Anyway, I guess the truck sales yard and ask them, right, I'd like to buy a new truck. How many drafts per, per litre does this truck get? And see what kind of face they pull at you. They will think you're completely bonkers to say, how many drafts per litre does this truck get? Or this car? Uh, duh. That's because the statement made is not an efficiency statement. It is something completely different to, an, uh, to answer a different problem. It is not efficiency. Uh, amount of energy or whatever objects moved relative to input power is not strictly efficiency. So we left the question with, what is this then? So this is actually a coefficient of performance or co-op mathematical equation. So the equation is valid, but this is not strictly an efficiency equation. So co-op is defined like this. A coefficient of performance for a heat pump is the ratio of energy transferred for, for heating to the input electricity used in the process. By golly, that sounds exactly what we're doing. And that is what is the correct term for when we're talking about input power to heat moved. It is essentially saying these are two completely separate things. But let's do a mathematical equation because we want to know for how much input power, how much can we move. And that is the mathematical equation that we're actually doing. So our output power divided by input power is a co-op maths equation, not an efficiency equation, in the way that we're currently using it. So we should pretty much never use the word efficiency when it comes to TEC when we're actually talking about co-op or coefficient of performance. Uh, there, a TEC does have an efficiency of itself, and we're going to talk about that in another video. However, I don't know if I've ever seen a single person actually talk about TEC efficiency and not coefficient of performance. You could say TEC efficiency is irrelevant, which is, of course is actually not the case. It is does have relevance. But when people talk about uh, how much power goes in, to how much is moved, that is coefficient of performance, and that can exceed 100% many, many times. You can have an unlimited amount of times multiplied, or you can have a ratio well under 100%, because we're basically taking two completely different uh, objects and dividing them with each other. The important thing about co is that we are talking about movement and that's why I've taken an electric car which has an input power and is moving another load in this direction as the car moves it is moving this load so it is not completely two random um, things chucked together it is talking about movement which is why we've used the RC car the flatbed and the heater on it and why we've used drafts on a truck we are talking fundamentally about movement we need to remember that a TEC, the, what we use it for is to move heat, removing energy. That is the point of it. You're applying some kind of heat source down here. It's rejecting or outputting heat, 
We've been trying to move it through the TC to what is normally some kind of crown. Mm, that's supposed to be a heat sink with a fan or whatever. I'm so bad at drawing, aren't I? I'm horrible. That is what a TEC does. It moves stuff. So it is well within the laws of physics because it moves energy. It's not producing, it's not breaking co uh, any physics laws in the process. It's just moving things. Just like trucks do with giraffes on them or nuclear weapons on the back of the truck. So that is coefficient of performance. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I hope that this has actually helped. I hope I don't get trolled too much. Please don't troll me. I love you guys. You love me, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll do another video because uh, we're never going to end the discussion about coefficient of performance and efficiency because it at this, we're up to video four, whatever. We haven't actually made any effort to defend the fact that a TEC can achieve over a cop greater than one. But that should be fairly obvious because a TEC will conduct heat through it, through it even with the power turned off. And why is that? Because TECs are made of dissimilar metals, two different kinds of metals slapped together, and metals conduct heat. So of course we can get crazy high coefficient. It's sort of easier than a normal AC air compression because, like I just said, you don't even need any power. It'll conduct heat. Not well, but it will. I need to stop talking like this. All right, guys. Uh, if you've made it thus far, you're doing super awesome. And we shall see you on the next one. Bye-bye.